good to see you today. Hope you're having a good day. We, are, we have begun a new study in 1 Corinthians. Today we're going to be looking in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Let's get over there and let's read a little bit. Yesterday we read the first three verses, read a little few other verses elsewhere. But today we're going to be looking in verses 4 through 9 primarily. Verse 4, I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God which was given to you by Christ Jesus, that you were enriched in everything by him in all utterance and all knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that you come short in no gift, eagerly waiting for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will also confirm you to the end that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ, God is faithful, by whom you were called into the fellowship of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. We read that verse yesterday, talking about how we are called, how they were called into the fellowship of His Son, just as we are. Today, what we're going to be thinking about, and I would suggest, just as we look at this simple passage, and I'll leave it up on the screen for a moment, sometimes we, I think it, at least for myself, we like to look at introductory statements or conclusionary statements, and we sort of treat them as cast-offs, and we think, eh, it's just fluff. I would suggest this is not fluff. He is already, he is already getting into the meat of what he's going to... Paul is, Paul's already getting into the meat of what he's going to be speaking about because we know when we come up to chapters 12, 13, 14, there's going to be a substantial... What those chapters are about are the spiritual gifts. It looks like he's already starting on those with these verses that we just read. I thank my God always concerning you for the grace. Remember what the word grace means. It means gift. So it's not necessarily the case that that word grace there is talking about grace is the way we sometimes think of it as just salvation, unmerited favor. He may be speaking, and I would suggest by the context... It looks like he's addressing the gifts. You're enriched in everything by him and all utterance knowledge. Verse 7 especially, so that you come short in no gift, eagerly waiting for the revelation. And think about that, that phrase, eagerly waiting for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, to look at this introductory, but by no means a cast-off um, passage, and, and to, to th consider a few points. One is, again, think about the gifts, consider the gifts, and to look at it, think about, and I know, pardon me, I know I say think about a lot. It's because I actually want you to think about it. I'll, I'll look up the however many synonyms of think there are one of these days. The gifts. What was their purpose? Revelation, confirmation. That was their purpose. In the first century, they could not say, please turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. These things were being written. These things were being revealed. Remember our passage, what it said. Eagerly waiting for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Here, as we think about the gifts, he talks about utterance and knowledge. I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God, the gift of God which was given to you by Christ Jesus, that you were enriched in everything by Him in all utterance and all knowledge. The gifts were given. The gifts were given. The passage. If any man speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. How do you do that when you do not have the complete canon of the New Testament in front of you. This is why the gifts were given, for utterance and knowledge. This is why these things were being revealed, bit by bit. The church was in its infancy, and the Lord understood that and knew that, and that's why these gifts were given to men. This is why men and women, Acts chapter 2, men and women, had these gifts. The Lord was helping them. So you have the gifts, utterance, and knowledge. talks about them eagerly waiting. And you see this in, especially here in Corinth, Paul is going to address this. They were extremely zealous for the spiritual gifts. 
extremely zealous. And it looks like they were keying in on speaking in tongues, and Paul's going to have to tell them prophesying is actually better. That um, Anyway, we'll get to that passage in 12, 13, and 14. But they were extremely zealous for the gifts. And that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. Because they were speaking as the Holy Spirit was working through them. This is how utterance, knowledge, the oracles of God, this is how they knew what God wanted them to do. It was confirmation. Remember, the purpose of the miracles. Revelation, confirmation. You see that same thing in these passages. Even, verse 6, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you. So once again, we have the same thing that's spoken about at the tail end of Mark chapter 16. You have a confirmation of what was being spoken. Think about in the first, in the first century. You had false teachers. You had even those who were going to be considering themselves apostles who were not. How would you be able to determine whether or not, for example, someone was a false apostle? One way would be to say, the apostles did the signs. Can you do the signs? If you can't do the signs, you want to talk about a red flag? That's not a red flag. That's an automatic rejection letter. If you can't do any signs, you're not an apostle. The apostles did signs confirming the word. And those who they laid hands on did signs. And part of the purpose of those signs was confirming the revelation that was happening. This is how God was giving his stamp of approval on what was being taught. If something was false, you think God's going to do, you think there's going to be any miracles done? No, it's not going to happen. It's confirmation. But also, it's also confirmation. And no, I am not repeating myself. Look back in the passage. Even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that you come short in no gift, eagerly waiting for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will also confirm you to the end. So we have confirmation once again. What I want you to see is... This is how this is how the foundation was being put in. This is how scripture was coming in into being. This is how the church was going to be able to be steady. Think about that idea of steadiness and being rock solid. Confirmation. Okay? Not just confirmation of the word, but this is how the disciples were confirmed. Think about firmed that idea. Okay, this is to look at it, to look at that passage. Who will also confirm you to the end that you may be blameless. That you may be blameless. A lot of people have the idea that we cannot be blameless. That's not what scripture says. That's not what scripture says at all. This passage very clearly shows we can be blameless. The question is how? And as we, as we con consider it, and we look at this passage, and actually let me put our points back up there. Okay, so how does, how does all this, as an application, how does all this fit together? How do you promote, and I tell you what, let's read the next, the next verse. Verse 10, Now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing and that there be no divisions among you, but that you per be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. We're familiar with that passage. How do we do it is the question. How do we promote unity? How do we deal with sin? How was the Lord helping them? What was the point of all of these gifts? The revelation. They were eager, eagerly waiting for the revelation. Because it was through revelation, that was how unity was going to happen. That was how they would all be able to speak the same thing. That was how they were going to be able to deal with sin. That is how they were all going to be able to get on the same page. They were eager for God's revealed word. 
At least that's what they needed to be. Hopefully you see the application for us, because the age of the miracles has passed. But the product of the age of the miracles has not passed, because that's scripture. When that which is perfect has come, that which is in part shall be done away with. It is done. The faith, once and for all, delivered to the saints. And this was done, to look back at our passage one more time, this was being done, look at verse 5, that you were enriched in everything by him in all utterance and knowledge. These things that were being done, that were being written, they were being written for our admonition, for our enrichment, so that we could speak as the oracles of God, so that we could have knowledge, knowledge of God's will. So, here, 1 Corinthians 1, eagerly waiting for the revelation. I hope we eagerly are looking into Scripture and using it as the Lord intended it to be used. I hope this study has been helpful, um, however brief it was. hope it's been beneficial. hope it's been edifying. Feel free to share, like, subscribe. You know all that good stuff. Uh, appreciate you tuning in. Hope you tune in tomorrow for another brief look into God's Word. Thanks for being with us today.